Good day grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson in September exam preparation. In this lesson we're going to be looking at another section on your electrodynamics and also the photoelectric effect. So it says the graph of the output of the EMF versus time for an AC generator is shown below. So you can see here that we've got a nice alternating current and we've got an EMF there, there which says 39.45, I'll just write out, 39.45 volts. It says define the term root mean square value for, of an AC voltage and you guys have to go and study this please go, learn your ex go find your exam guidelines and then go study this. But basically a root mean square voltage, is root mean square value is the average voltage. It's the actual voltage that you get out. Because remember that these peaks get cut off. So it's the average voltage that, these be that is supplied to the circuit. Now it says calculate the root mean square voltage of the generator. Well, if you go look on your equations sheet, you will see that there's an equation that says V root mean square is equal to the V max over root 2. And you can see that here we've got the value of 39.45. So we're going to go 39,45 divided by root 2. So we're going to pop that in our calculator and we're going to see it's 39.45 divided by square root 2 equals 27.895 so we round it up and it becomes 28 so that is equal to 28 volts so that is the root mean square now it says give one reason why AC voltage is preferred to DC voltage for everyday use and that's always the same reason guys it's because it's to prevent from a loss our voltage or loss of power due to attenuation when your tr voltage is transported across long distances. Okay, now I'll explain what I've said there. Okay, do you understand that you have got Kuberg, for example, which is producing lots of electricity? And what it does, it, it steps up, okay, the voltage. It steps it up to a very high voltage, but it is AC, okay? Then what happens is it travels very long distances and then it gets to another transformer box and they step it down and then they get another transformer box and they step it down and eventually it gets to your house where it is at 220 volts. Well, actually three something, but don't worry about that. Okay, we get out 220, it's actually sitting at 315 volts, but that's the peak voltage and this is the root mean square. Okay, now what happens is the reason they put this in very high voltage is because this reduces the loss of electricity um, due to friction. Okay, it is better to have a low, low current, high voltage than to have a high current, low voltage. Because current is the rate at which the electrons are going past. And the faster they go, the more the friction and the more the heat due to that. Okay, so we want to have low current, high voltage. So there's lots of high voltage. Obviously, if we can't, we can't have this 100,000 volts being put through our house, we would fry. Our toasters would fry, our microwaves would fry, everything would fry. So we need to step it down. And the only way we can step it up and step it down, the only way these transformers work is if we have alternating current. Transformers do not work with di direct current, it has to be alternating current. And that is the one very important reason why we use AC voltage. So we can step it up and step it down so we can transfer up electricity over long distances without reducing the loss of electricity. Okay, let's carry on. It says, a photodiode consisting of a sodium plate and an anode is connected to a circuit diagram, is connected in a circuit diagram as shown below. The learner shines light of different frequencies onto the metal plate. He observes that the ammeter connected to the circuit only registers the reading when light of a frequency of 4.389 times by 10 to the 14 hertz or more shines on the sodium plate. 
Now it says, write down the correct scientific term that describes the phenomena where electrons are ejected from a metal surface when light of a suitable frequency shines on the metal, and that is photoelectric effect. Very fancy way of saying the photoelectric effect. Then it says calculate the work function of sodium. So this guys is obviously the threshold frequency because it is the minimum frequency that is needed to get electrons to be emitted. So the work function is equal to H times the threshold frequency where H is Planck's constant. So now all we have to do is substitute in Planck's constant which is on your formula sheets which is 6,63 times by 10 to the negative 34 times by your threshold frequency which is 4,389 times by 10 to the 14 so what do we need to do? We need to get out our calculators so we go 6.63 exponent negative 34 times 4,389 exponent 14 and it all equals 2.91 times 10 to the minus 19. That equals 2,19 times by 10 to the minus 19 and grade 12s please put in your units. You lose marks if you don't put units in and the units for the work function because its energy is joules. Okay, now it says Calculate the velocity of an electron that is ejected from the sodium if light of a frequency of 4.83 times 10 to the 14 hertz shines on the metal. Okay, so then again if you look at your formula sheet you will see it says that HF is equal to HF0 plus a half mv squared. Or you can see it's E is equal to W plus a half mv squared. Where this is the energy of the incident light, this is the work function, this is the mass of the electron and this is its velocity. But they're not asking for that, yes they are, they're asking for the velocity, sometimes they ask for the kinetic energy. So this here is going to be H Planck's constant times by this frequency because this is the frequency of the incident light. W we already worked out, it's 2.19 times 10 to the minus 19. So then we can just substitute the mass of an electron and we get V. So let's go. So we got, and I'm just going to write a little bit over because I'm worried about space. So it's 6,63 times by 10 to the minus 34 times by the frequency of 4,83 times by 10 to the 14 plus is equal to, sorry, is equal to, and we'll write it below it, the work function of 2,19 times by 10 to the negative 19 plus a half times the mass of an electron which is 9.11 times by 10 to the minus 31 V squared. So therefore we can multiply this and subtract that and we will end up with this thing here. So let's just do that. So I've got 6.63 exponent negative 34 times by 4.83 exponent 14 is going to be 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19. So that is 3,2 times by 10 to the minus 19 minus 2,19 times 10 to the minus 19 divided by a half times 9.11 times by 10 to the negative 31 is going to give me V squared. So let's pop that in our calculator. So we're going to go minus 2.19 exponent negative 19 equals divided by bracket 0, 0,5 times 9.1 exponent negative 31 close brackets equals and that there is the square of the velocity so we're going to square it and it becomes 471679.25 471679.25 
471679.25. So V is equal to 471671.25 meters per second. Okay, so that is the velocity of the electron. It's pretty fast. Okay. Um, yes, that's right. Now it says electrons are ejected from a metal with the velocity V when the light shines on it. Will the velocity increase, decrease, or remain the same if light at a greater frequency is used? And the correct answer is yes, definitely it will increase. Why? Because we've seen here that the frequency affects the kinetic energy. So the greater the frequency, the greater the kinetic energy, therefore the greater the velocity or a different metal with a lower work function is used. If a lower work function is used, then this is going to use up less of the energy. So the answer is again increase because of the fact that your this will decrease, therefore there will be more energy for your kinetic energy. Right, grade 12, that's the second lesson in this week, working on preparation for our September exams. Have a great day.